use the uh, the uh, raise your hand function to do that. We'll we'll get to you that way too because we want to make sure we cover all your questions. So with that, what I'd like to do is is uh, turn it over to uh, to Marty Patton um, from the Capital Gazette, and he is going to talk talk a little bit uh, and then introduce our speaker. So Marty, it's all yours. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everyone, again, and welcome. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Marty Patton, and I am the I oversee the advertising for the Capital Gazette Communications. And today, I'm really excited to introduce our guest speaker, Rachel Scudder, who is a digital recruitment consultant for the Baltimore Sun Media Group. And today, Rachel will be discussing many of the current recruitment challenges and opportunities businesses are faced with, such as uh, current employment trends, uh, COVID's impact on the recruiting process. Uh, presenting your business potential employees and how to reach the best candidate. Uh, Rachel's experiences and background brings a vast knowledge um, that I'm sure you will find very valuable and entertaining. Rachel has worked with companies such as Monster and Gannett, um, Gannett Media and Recruitology. Uh, participation, as Mark said, participation is encouraged, so please feel free to ask questions either by raising your hand or writing a uh, chat message. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank the Anne Arundel County Chamber for allowing us to present this to you today. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Rachel Scudder. So Rachel, take it away. Um, thank you, Marty, and thank you guys all so much for, for having me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, so you guys should all be able to see my slideshow. Um, and thank you for that great introduction, Marty. Um, so as Marty mentioned, I've been working in recruitment advertising um, for over 10 years um, and really work with con uh, companies nationwide um, and, and kind of see, you know, from all angles what's going on in the industry. And so my hope today is that we can kind of cover, um, you know, what's going on overall, um, some of the impacts uh, COVID has had, uh, like Marty mentioned. We are going to talk about some solutions that are available to you um, and ways that they can help. And we're also going to talk about just um, in your advertising in general, um, how you can be sure that you're um, being effective, posting good jobs, um, and having a good strategy. So we can go ahead and jump right in here with some industry statistics. And we're going to start just with the Baltimore DMA. Um, and Marty, I don't know if you want to jump in here at all, um, but this is going to include the, yeah. the entire surrounding area. Yeah, I just want to add that the Baltimore DA, DMA, sorry, the Baltimore DMA does include Anne Arundel County and Annapolis. So yeah, all the stats absolutely. pertain to this as well. So thank you, Rachel. Yeah, of course. So um, the Baltimore DMA, we just wanted to cover some of the, the local stats here. So um, in uh, industries that we've seen growing, um, professional and business services, um, so companies who are providing, you know, technology um, and services to other industries and companies um, have had the largest gain um, over the last year um, among uh, private industry. Um, education and health services have gained uh, over 10,000 jobs. Um, in the last year in the metropolitan area. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. You know, health services were facing a pandemic. Um, education jobs have also been growing pretty steadily. Um, and then uh, employment in leisure and hospitality. So we've really seen this grow steadily over the last year. Um, if you think about it, it really makes sense because in 2020, when the pandemic started, um, leisure and hospitality were probably the most hit industry. Um, so there was a ton of room for rebounding growth there. Um, I think we've seen dips um, with things like the Omicron variant, the Delta variant, um, where the, the leisure and hospitality industries have kind of slowed down again, but we continue to see really great rebound on that. So I think we'll continue to see that. I do have some unemployment uh, information and, and just some average uh, household information as well. Um, so we did have a, a pretty steady uh, unemployment rate there um, in the fours. And then when COVID happened um, and right before COVID, it did um, really go up. Um, and we've seen it kind of trend back to the same place that we were pre-pandemic, uh, which is great. Um, 2021 um, population, over 575,000 people an average household income, um, about $74,000. I'm 
I want to talk, um, you know, through strategies that you guys can utilize um, to make sure that you have a good recruitment plan. And one of the most missed um, strategies, I think, with recruiting is a passive strategy. Um, so not just posting jobs and hoping people apply, um, but really having a passive strategy to get in front of people who might not be looking for a job, but might be open. Um, I think a lot of the population is open to new opportunities. Um, in fact, about 82% of people are open to the possibility of a new role. So I might not necessarily be looking and searching and actively applying, but if someone approaches me with the right opportunity, I'm going to be willing to listen. So that's something that you should absolutely think about when recruiting. And about 64% of people are satisfied with their current workplace, but about 50% of people have had an interview in the last year. So absolutely think about uh, having a passive reach out or a proactive way. And then the other thing you should think about there is, are you, you know, keeping your staff happy? Are you making sure you're trying to retain them? Because people are reaching out to these folks who work for your companies with other opportunities, and those folks are interviewing. Workplace culture can help with that. Um, so workplace culture is really the key. Um, so making sure that you are uh, facilitating a great company culture um, and making sure your employer employees are happy, but also keeping in mind that you should be really pushing your great company culture out into your advertising when trying to find new people. So culture can be a combination of things. It can be a common mission, goals. Um, it can be the work environment. It can be you know, the values of the company, the diversity. 86% um, of people say that company culture is important to them. About 57% of college graduates are actually um, you know, really caring about company culture. So it's, it's very important to make sure um, that your culture is um, something that stands out among the competition and something that you're putting out there in your advertisements. You know, putting things like benefits in your ad is great, but have you thought about putting uh, non-traditional benefits? You know, things you guys do as a team or a group, um, things that keep people working at your company and happy, um, and, you know, things that you love about your company as well. Um, the job hunt during COVID. So, you know, the reality that we've been facing has really changed um, over the past um, couple of years. Um, you know, this has really changed the dynamic of our workforce. Um, and I think that we're going to con continue to see that. Um, you know, we, we all refer to this as kind of the new normal. So the recent reality here, um, about one fourth of workers have changed industries um, since the pandemic has started. I personally have a great friend who is in sales. Um, she is now in nursing school. So, you know, it's just, it's something that people are uh, having the opportunity to do. Um, over 40% of people said that catching COVID is a really big stressor um, and it does contribute to the job seeking process. Um, if you work for a company that uh, is very, um, you know, facing clients or getting out in front of people or being in big groups of people and being exposed, that could really um, affect your hiring. Um, it could also affect your retention. And so it's something to think about it. Do you have safety measures in place? Do you have, you know, are you putting safety measures in your job description so that people who are nervous about COVID can understand, you know, what you're doing as a company to keep those employees safe? 60% um, of surveyed workers inquired about um, current and prospective employers' safety measures when it comes to COVID-19. Um, another stat, um, this stat is uh, about second jobs. Um, so, you know, the, the pandemic has really put stress on people, um, has caused people to lose their jobs, has, you know, caused money uncertainty. Um, about 53% of people have had a, a second source of income outside their current jobs. Um, compared to 36% in February 2020. So this has grown um, and it could just be due to the uncertainty. I know there were lots of layoffs, furloughs and things like that. So um, there is a lot of uh, anxiety around that. Um, employers face a challenge and I'm sure you guys understand that as employers. So um, the average annual turnover rate for an employer is about 57%. Um, companies lose about 18% of their workforce um, to turnover every year. 
um, on average, 12% uh, of this is voluntary, 6% is involuntary. So layoffs, furloughs, firings, things of that nature. Um, hiring is expensive. So uh, about $4,400 on average is the average cost per hire in the United States. So making sure that you have a uh, really good recruitment plan, you know, posting, posting a job for $100 really may not do it anymore. The average time to fill a position in the United States is 36 to 42 days. So posting a job for a month and, and you know, wondering why it's not filled yet, this can really be part of that. 15% um, of HR expenses are usually allocated toward recruitment efforts as well. Um, so that may be something to think about. Are you allocating that much budget towards recruitment? Is that enough budget for you um, to be allocating? Um, the workplace has changed forever. So, you know, with the pandemic and post pandemic, when we get to post pandemic, whenever that is, um, we're going to see this probably continue to change, but roles are really becoming outdated. Um, you know, employers are really needing to focus more on things like hiring for skills rather than a specific job title. So, you know, just because I have a specific job title doesn't mean that um, I'm going to have the skills needed. So people are starting to focus on, okay, what are the, the skills that I can identify that this person has and can I train them and grow them into the role that I would like them to be in? Digital skills are gonna be critical for the workplace of the future. Um, you know, we all probably, or most of us probably went remote um, when, when COVID started. A lot of us have stayed remote. Um, some have gone back to the office. Um, I just read some recent stats on um, just remote work in general um, and how much it's grown over the last um, you know, quarter even and how much of our workforce is going to be remote uh, when we get, you know, to the end of this. Um, so remote work is here to stay. If your employees uh, are being, you know, asked to come back into the office, you may see turnover from that because they can go, you know, somewhere else and work remote. Um, the hiring process is extremely digital now, um, from job postings to career fairs to, you know, you name it. A lot of stuff is being done virtually instead of in person. 58% um, of employers use social media uh, networks like LinkedIn and Facebook um, to connect with hires. Most people are uh, utilizing things like applicant tracking systems um, to help them organize their, their candidates digitally. And about a third of candidates apply to uh, their most recent jobs through job boards. So, you know, sometimes people say job boards are kind of the dinosaur. They're not, you know, working anymore, but they definitely are still a huge part of recruiting. They're not the only part of recruiting, but they are a huge part of it. Job seekers have choices. So I think as employers, sometimes we get too focused on what we need rather than uh, the job seeker and, and their point of view. Um, and so one, a couple things here that you should really think about. Uh, job seekers are starting their search on Google over 70% of the time. We'll talk a little bit more about Google and why this matters um, here uh, in, on the next, um, or in the next couple slides. Um, but that is a very important stat to keep in your mind. Um, job seekers use an average of 16 different sources when uh, looking and researching jobs. Uh, so if you're posting jobs on one site, you're probably missing out on a very large audience. 61% of seekers are visiting the company's website before applying for a job. So if your company website doesn't have information about you know, working there, your culture, your job listings, um, or if it's not easily and readily uh, available and easily easily searchable on the site, um, you may have some, some drop off there. And then over 70% of uh, job seekers are actually coming from mobile devices. Um, so they're using their smart, smartphone. So another thing to think about there is your uh, recruiting process or your uh, applicant process on your phone, uh, on your website, mobile friendly, or is it too difficult for someone to apply for their, from their phone? So for you guys, some takeaways, uh, for employers, you have to advertise where people are looking. You have to optimize for Google. Again, we'll talk more about that. You have to have an appealing careers page and you have to plan for a mobile experience. So we're gonna talk through our solutions um, a little bit, but I do wanna pause there just to see if there were any questions. I am gonna check 
the chat box. So someone did ask, what's the average cost for uh, to hire someone made up of? Um, does that include considerations such as lost opportunity? So um, that average cost per hire could include cost, uh, things of that nature. It could include your onboarding process as well. Um, I think that stat of the 15% of HR budgets are used uh, should be used for recruitment. Um, that might help kind of figure out where you guys are at in that in that opportunity. But this does uh, encompass um, not just the advertising, but the onboarding process as well. Um, and and it, it may or may not include lost opportunity. That's something that I can dig into um, and, and likely follow up um, when I send over the slides and, and things like that. Any other questions on the stats that were covered? Okay. All right. So we're gonna dig in here um, to just the solutions that are offered through the Baltimore Sun Media Group. Um, so total reach, it's very large. Um, there, we have all kinds of job board partnerships that you can utilize um, that are you know, more broad, more targeted so that you can get in front of the right candidates. It's extremely comprehensive. And I think that this is one of the most important things that we're gonna talk about today. It is a one-stop shop for recruitment. So whether that is posting jobs, um, doing ads in the paper, doing other digital solutions, it is something that the Baltimore Sun can do for you, all of it. Um, so, you know, rather than working with multiple job boards, multiple partners, you're able to do everything that you need to do all from one place, which for me, time is really important and, and that's a way to save time. Um, we have intelligent technology. We will talk more about that as well. Um, and that is something that's really helping employers in this market. Um, so let the, the Baltimore Sun uh, Media Group be the trusted source of your local news and information, but also your one-stop shop for recruitment needs. So again, print and online editions, access to niche job boards, broad job boards, um, digital products, um, really anything that you, that you need, you can um, get from this group. So I do you wanna focus on uh, Google for jobs? Um, I did mention that Google, over 70% of job searches start here. And if you're not familiar with the Google for jobs widget, all you have to do is go to Google and do a search. So if you go to Google and search for a job, sales jobs, nursing jobs, uh, driving jobs, this box that you see on my screen is gonna pop up and it's gonna have all these jobs aggregated from all across the web. Um, something that people don't realize is that jobs um, in this Google for Jobs widget, it, they do not include any jobs from Indeed. So if you were, you know, posting your jobs just on Indeed, they are not going to appear in the Google for Jobs widget. Um, we don't really know the, the dynamics or why, you know, the Google and Indeed kind of just don't play nice together. Um, and so this is very, very important. Um, the solutions that you can post to um, and the job boards that you can post to through the Baltimore Sun, um, excluding Indeed, um, will appear here. So if you're posting your jobs with us, we're optimizing your jobs with Google. Um, so this is uh, something that is uh, really growing. It's getting a ton of traffic. Um, looks like another chat came through. Does Google include LinkedIn postings? They do. So um, you'll see all kinds of sites in there. You'll see ZipRecruiter, you'll see company websites, you'll see social sites. Um, there's there's a, a ton in there. So really the only one that I know of that will not appear is Indeed. Um, and I don't know that Indeed tells their, their customers that or not. Um, it's certainly something that I wouldn't want my customer to know if I was you know, uh, selling Indeed postings um, because it's just such a huge uh, driver of job searches. here. So we're going to talk um, about our Max Recruit product very briefly. So um, any questions that you might have um, on any of these products can be directed back to Marty um, and the team. Um, and, you know, they can really help put a custom solution together for you. So what we go through today product wise is really just going to be extremely high level overview just so that you can kind of get a taste of what is available. So our kind of main product offering is called Max Recruit. The way that this product works is we are distributing your job using our smart technology. I know I mentioned that, that uh, artificial intelligence and smart technology. We're distributing your job out to major job boards. So we have partnerships 
with Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Glassdoor, Jobs to Careers, ne uh, Next, um, about 30 total sites within this product, aggregator job boards. Um, and we also have uh, partnerships with all the social sites, um, some other job boards. And again, we'll talk through those. But this solution in particular is getting your job on those major aggregator job boards. We are also optimizing these on our back end with our technology. Um, and we are shifting them from site to site depending on the performance. So if for some reason your ad is not performing on Indeed, and it is performing on ZipRecruiter, we're gonna move the budget away from Indeed and over to ZipRecruiter. And then if tomorrow your ad you know, isn't performing well on ZipRecruiter, and again, it's performing well on Indeed, we'll shift it back. So these postings are smart technology. They take the guesswork out of where you should post your job. You don't have to say, okay, I have a nursing job, I have a sales job, um, I need to post a job on this site. You don't have to worry about choosing. We're going to help you do that automatically by optimizing these on the back end. Um, so that smart technology is really helpful um, and time saving. You don't have to worry about your bid amounts. You don't have to worry about your budgeting. We're going to take care of all of it. Um, I do have a few just industry stats here. Our standard version of the product um, is getting about 64 clicks on average. Um, and the industry average is about 20 clicks. So that just helps show a little bit of a benchmark number. Looks like we have a question in the chat box. How do you measure doing well? Um, we base that off of the traffic that you're getting, uh, the engagement that you're getting, um, you know, the applications that you're getting. We also base that on um, the cost per click. So another thing that we'll do is optimize these based on the cost per click. So let's say, for instance, the cost per click on Indeed is $2 per click, but the uh, cost per click on ZipRecruiter is 50 cents per click, and we're getting good results there. We're going to move your ad away from Indeed for the time being and try to get you a better return on investment and spend your dollars in a more wise way to get you more applicants rather than you know, spend all your budget in one place on just a handful of people. Any other questions on that? I'll pull the chat box up one more time. Okay. In addition to the major job boards that we can post to, we can also post to uh, niche networks that we've created. So we have a college network that goes out to college and universities, uh, colleges and universities across the country, um, as well as some college job boards. Um, we also have um, a green network, which is great for maybe a company with a green or recycling initiative. Diversity, veteran, um, both of those are fantastic for anything. Um, and a social network that gets distributed out to Twitter. Um, it also gets distributed out to LinkedIn. We also have industry specific networks. These are based on your role. Um, so these are something that you can include in packages based on you know, the, the role or industry you're hiring for. So if you have a healthcare job, it can go to healthcare. Um, if you have you know, manufacturing, you'd be like warehouse or production, it can go on the man manufacturing and trade network. Um, so there is a network really out there for any kind of industry or role. Looks like we have another question in here. Uh, could you mention which college job boards that you engage with? Um, so we can, we don't have, um, we're not partnered with Handshake. So I see that's in here. We have a big college list um, that I can provide to you um, when I send the deck and the information out. Um, so that you can search colleges in your area to see if they're on there. We have thousands of colleges and, and universities, universities that we partner with. Um, we also partner with a company called After College, uh, which is a very large college job board um, that your jobs would be posted on. Um, but that list of, of colleges is something that I can provide. Awesome questions, guys. Keep those coming. We do have some other premium job posting products. Um, so combining you know, your Max Recruit or your niche network products with um, Craigslist. Um, this might sound silly to some people, but Craigslist does really well. Um, it also, it really does well for blue collar positions, um, drivers, production, warehouse, um, the, you know, those types of positions. So you can post 30 day ads to uh, Craigslist. 
We also have a partnership with careerbuilder.com. Careerbuilder is a really trusted brand in the recruitment space, um, and we are able to post 30 day ads for you to Careerbuilder. So, just again, you know, reiterating the fact that this is a one stop shop. You do not have to call Careerbuilder, ZipRecruiter, Indeed, um, go on, you know, and find and hunt down these niche sites. You don't have to go to Craigslist and post your job 10 different times. We can do it for you from one place. We also have passive products. So the passive products are really tailored to that, that passive strategy that I mentioned, um, getting in front of people who might be a good fit, um, but not necessarily searching. So the matched candidate product is us matching candidates from our resume database to your job description. Um, we're able to match these folks and load them right into your employer account. And then at that point, you would be able to reach out to them, um, see if they'd be open to a, a position. We also have ranking technology in our portal um, that you would have access to that would rank these folks as great, good, or possible based on the resume. If you want to be more proactive um, and you know not, not let us do the matching for you, we have a candidate search product. This is a resume database that you're able to log into and search through um, 30 million resumes and about 120 million social profiles. You can use filters like keywords, location, job title, um, citizenship, education, uh, security clearances. Um, those are all available um, in there to search as, as well as recency of the resume um, up to the last seven days if you'd like. Um, so this is a fantastic way to get in and do your own sourcing if you have the time to do that and then reach out to those passive candidates to see if they would be a good fit. In addition, we have um, passive Facebook and Instagram campaigns. These are targeted audience campaigns that get out in front of people who might be a good fit, who might you know, be in a similar role or industry. We're targeting individuals right on their social media um, along with our millions of job seeker data points. So these ads will appear on Facebook and they will appear on Instagram right in the news feed for people who would be a good fit. So we do have other products. Um, I didn't want to talk through every single product on our list today, but I did want to make sure that everyone had an understanding, again, of that one-stop shop mentality um, of all the partnerships that, that we have and can facilitate for you. Um, and so, you know, if you have questions about other options or products, you, you can reach out to Marty um, and, and he can point you in the right direction. So the last thing I want to talk about here, um, and one of the most important, I think, is your content. Um, what, what does a winning job post look like? What is a, a good job post look like? So when you're posting jobs, you really want to make sure you have good information. Um, your job should be at least 150 words in length. Um, that really isn't that long if you, you know, put that into a Word document, um, but ideally 300 to 800 words. You don't really need to count the words. You just want to make sure you have good information in there and your posting doesn't say driver wanted call this phone number and that's it. You know, you have to think about this as a, a marketing document, um, jobs that focus on what you do for the candidate get about three times the response than jobs that focus on what they are then come, uh, job descriptions that focus on what the company needs. So I mentioned that earlier, you know, I think it's hard to get um, in the mindset of thinking about what the candidate is thinking, what the candidate is wanting. Um, and it's, you know, easy to think about what you need from someone, but you have to think about in this, mar this job market, how you can get these people, how you can attract them. So again, three times the response if you focus on what you can do for the candidate. Highlighting pay or pay range, the benefit and culture. Um, and when I say the benefits, I, I mean, again, non-traditional benefits too, like the flexibility or autonomy that you offer. Um, maybe you guys do um, remote work a couple days a week. Maybe you have a gym on site. Maybe you guys do fun holiday parties. Whatever it is, put it in the job description. Um, talk about your commitment to diversity and inclusion. Um, millennials are the largest generation in the workforce and diversity and inclusion is extremely important to them. So if you don't have a strategy to target millennials, um, that's one way to do it. And honestly, you should you know, be uh, facilitating a diverse and inclusive workforce anyway. Um, use standard titles uh, you know, for your job. So if you have internal jargon in your titles like engineering manager four, 
Well, people don't really know what that means if they're outside of your company. So maybe something like senior engineering lead or just engineering manager, senior engineering manager. Um, avoid things that people will not understand. Eliminate abbreviations. So if you're, you know, abbreviating things, again, using internal jargon, anything, anything like that in your job description, make sure that you are um, really spelling things out so that candidates can understand the description. Um, when you post jobs, try to do one role per job posting. There is targeting associated with many job postings these days. And if you're putting something like um, a nurse and a customer service rep in the same posting, the targeting is going to be all over the place. So it's really best to do one role per posting. Career fair postings, um, job seekers don't really tend to search in that way. Um, it can deliver some traffic, but it's not the best approach. Um, adding equal opportunity employer statement can go a long way as well. And then you can always ask our team for assistance with your job description. So for instance, if you're not sure if your job description is good or you want some you know, second set of eyes on that, we're able to help you with that too. Here's the anatomy of an effective job posting. So we have a common title, your location, a simple and clear company overview or, or job overview, um, short, easy to read bullet points, uh, technical keywords that will pop up in a search, and then your online application method. And just a tip for online application method. If you are able to use an email address for applications, you're gonna get way less drop off. You're gonna get um, more candidates. It's most trackable. It's the easiest way for a job seeker to apply for your position. If you're using an ATS system, um, and I know that it, it is hard sometimes for people to make changes to things like this, but if your ATS system has 14 pages of an application, you're going to get about 50% drop off every step in the process. So it is very important to make sure that your application online is extremely easy for people to fill out. People have a lot of choices right now, and they are not going to take time to fill out an application if it's difficult. Um, the hiring process, um, this is really important too. So making sure that you're communicating well with the people who apply for your positions and not letting resumes go into a black hole. So if people apply for the jobs um, that you have posted, you reach out maybe to a few candidates you're interested in, but then you never reach out to the candidates that you're not interested in. People can kind of get a bad taste in their mouth from you know never being um, heard from or never hearing from you. So it may be uh, a good best practice to reach out to individuals and say, Thank you for applying. Um, at this time, you know, you don't meet the, the requirements that we're looking for, but maybe um, in the future, you know, we'd love to have a conversation with you if something does come up um, that you would be a good fit for. Just really making sure from start to finish that the process is very communicative, making sure that you're, you're um, not leaving a bad taste in people's mouths and that you're having a positive experience for everyone. Be upfront about the process too. Um, so as people apply for jobs, if um, there is a really long apply process, let's say you have multiple interviews, you have uh, in-person interviews, and you know it takes a few weeks to get through the process, tell that person upfront. It can be really hard to you know, go through an interview process thinking you have a conversation with someone and you might get an offer and then they say, all right, we want to pass you on to this person to talk to and then this person to talk to. And you have to kind of, especially if you're employed, figure out, okay, do I have to take PTO so that I can interview for this job every day this week? Um, so it just, it can be very difficult. So make sure if you are going to put someone through your apply process, give them an outline of what that might look like so they can plan ahead. Um, be transparent about the company, uh, what you expect of the person that you're hiring. Explain the onboarding and training process to them so that they can know what to expect. Um, people who know what to expect are less likely to turn over. Um, so you don't want to get turnover, you know, right after you hire someone and they're in the onboarding process. So be very upfront and transparent with them. And that is our presentation today. So my hope is that you guys got some good tips, um, some tricks, some you know good stats that maybe help you kind of understand the industry even more, um, and then a good overview of, of the available options to you.
So I'll kind of turn this over to you, Marty, to see if yeah, there's anything you. else. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks so much, Rachel. That was a great overview. And before I, I'm just, I have a couple of comments, but um, does anyone have any questions for Rachel while we're still here? Well, again, if you have any questions for Rachel please, or me, please reach out to me and I'll make sure that we get back to you. But I am gonna comment on a couple of things because uh, obviously the Palmer Sun and Capital, because we hire people all the time and I cannot in, um, emphasize enough the importance of branding and really creating um, and presenting the culture of your company because it really can really um, help identify the correct and have much more qualified and you know, from an employee retention standpoint, really help with getting better qualified candidates and candidates are gonna stay much quicker. And a great example is that, you know, being in the newspaper business, we there's a perception that um, it's a print product and that, you know, print is declining. And that's why that's true. We also have state-of-the-art technology and we have a lot to offer and interest uh, young people, millennials in particular. I mean, we have many, many digital products and they're growing all the time. So that is something that we've done a much better job of presenting and to our you know, potential candidates. And as a result, gotten much better candidates. And the other thing is the fact that we are a one-stop shop. I mean, uh, we can create and help you create an entire uh, recruitment strategy. And as you can see, there is many, many different job boards and ways and platforms and products to get out there. So to really have a company be able to come in and optimize that for you, I think will save you a lot of time and money. So with that said, um, if there's no other questions, we thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Mark and Amy for letting us um, have you have the time to present. And thank you so much, Rachel, for your time and efforts. Yeah, and I did see one more question. Um, there was a direct message about the deck being available. Um, and I believe that the deck and a recording, um, as well as that list of colleges that I uh, mentioned, um, I will likely send that to you, Marty, um, to get yes. to Mark. Perfect, and then we'll get that out. Yeah, we're, did, we will. I did. Oh, go ahead, Amy. Oh, I was just going to say, in reference to that, there are some people that jumped on the call that did not register. So if you will put your email address in the chat box, um, I need that if you want to be able to get a copy of the deck and the recording. So if you did not register, stick your email in there for me. Yeah, and I think uh, I was just going to say that, but uh, my uh, big, t and, th and thank you, Rachel, that was a great job kind of looking yeah, at some course. national trends and, and, and then bringing it home. Thanks for helping coordinate this, but my big takeaway here seems to be that the concept of going out now to fill a position is you need to step back and create a whole strategy. And, and it's not just posting on a board, but looking at multiple um, avenues to push the information out there. And then going back to information, what you're pushing out there is describing the job. It was so good about what you said about a engineer four. I've seen that in a lot of ads. What the heck does that mean? Um, but putting it in more or more human terms, and, and maybe that was a question. I don't, I'll throw it out to Marty and or Rachel. How do how do you come about writing a good good job description? How can that get improved? That folks on the call, what can they do to make it better? Yeah, so there are some sites out there um, with generic job descriptions that you can kind of use as like a key or a guide. Um, and I can uh, also include that when I send the deck as well. Um, I have a list of them that, that can be utilized, but I really think it is about maybe a cup focusing in a couple different pieces. So maybe you do a paragraph about who you are as a company, maybe like a little paragraph about what the job is, and then maybe short, easy to read bullet points about um, qualifications and maybe duties of the job. So people understand what they need to be qualified for and what they would be doing on a daily basis. And then after that, I think you can focus on, again, what's in it for that person. You know, what's the benefits, the pay range, um, the non-traditional benefits. Um, and then you can always put an equal opportunity employer statement at the end. Um, I think that that's always a good, a good move. So you can think of it in that way. And then I will send those, those um, sites with the generic descriptions that you can use as a starting point too. I'm just going to add to that. I think understanding why people like working for you and trying to incorporate those in those points into your ad is really important because it's going to, again, it's going to really help qualify and get the right person in there because like attracts like. So, 
Yes. Yeah. If you can um, survey your employees internally and say, what do you love about working here? Um, especially your, your tenured employees who've been there for a long time. What do you like about working here? What keeps you here? Um, you know, why haven't you left for another job? Um, and think about those answers that you get when you're creating your ads. All right, that's great. Like I said, my takeaway was that recruitment strategy, which is new thinking for me, it usually just post an ad and they will come. Um, the other piece is um, work, since it's a little bit more complex, you now having uh, someone who can help you along the way, that one-stop shop is great. And, and that's where I think our friends at the uh, Capital Gazette, Marty and Baltimore Sun, with your regional reach too, is, is gonna be valuable. So y'all, all you members that are looking at regional or a recruitment strategy, one-stop shop, Give Marty a call, then and, and you'll uh, you, Mark. kind of wrap this, get 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 the, get more applicants because it's it's a challenge and and that's the other thing is that timetable too to hire you know it's thirty to forty five days so and our sailing school friends you know you guys got to get get up and running man get those people out on the water so uh, let's go so and having a pipeline is very important too so just because you're not hiring right now for someone. If it takes that, that's 30 to 40 days to hire someone, you want to have a pipeline of candidates that you can reach out to the second that someone leaves or the second you think someone might leave. Yep. All right. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Mark and Amy. And um, we will be reaching out to you um, individually as well as a follow-up. So more to come.